But the cool thing is, not only is it a four link, but this kit is a bolt on, no welding. We're gonna remove the leaf springs and we're gonna keep our stock Dana 60 axle. And we're actually gonna swap it over to coil suspension. So lots of guys will do the axle swap uh, for the 05 plus, which definitely has its place. But for those of you that aren't wanting to swap your entire axle, you can actually buy this kit, keep all your uh, stock components for the most part, but you're gonna be adding some of this stuff on. The kit right now, this is like one of the first ones that go, that's going on a customer's truck, but right now he doesn't offer it with like your lift springs or anything or a pitman arm or shocks. And so you gotta buy all that stuff yourself. So we got some Icon springs here. These are actually for a, uh, 05 plus with a two and a half inch lift what we're trying to achieve is this already has a two and a half inch lift on it the 97 or i'm sorry the 96 has about four and a half or so inches of lift so we're trying to make the dually match the 96 so with the two and a half inch obs spring i think we're going to get pretty close first case i can always just put a small lift uh, puck underneath the coil springs I have bought nothing for the rear of the truck yet. I'm not exactly sure how this is gonna end up sitting in the front. And so I don't wanna buy anything for the back yet, but we'll get the front put on, drop it down, give it that uh, sweet Carolina squat, and then figure out what size lift we need to do in the back to get it to sit level, just like the other three trucks. I also do not know what size shocks to get yet. So we will install everything, drop it down, and then I'll measure for the mounting points to determine how long of a shock we need. I gotta say though, this stuff looks primo, all powder coated up. I think I said it earlier, it does come with your bushings and everything. This is what happened to them at the powder coater. They powder coated them with them installed shocker they got all messed up in the oven so we got new ones coming from mdk uh, he was really good i sent him a picture told him what happened and uh he's mailing me out some new ones i am so conflicted right now i'm trying to tell myself that i should not put that on an eight inch lift and in 38s or 40s or something like that because it looks so stinking good that high removing the shock 18 millimeter I don't know how long this lift has been on this thing, but if you look at how much this is fully extended, this shock, and you can see, I mean, there's like a couple of inches of travel in this thing. Remove the factory shock mount. It's a three quarter inch on mine. For me, I'm just using a three quarter inch deep set on the back side of the frame and then taking the impact since everything's loosened up and then just undoing them like that. I'm gonna remove this brake line from the caliper. My truck's already lifted two and a half inches and it's getting lifted even more. So I'm gonna take it off because I'm gonna have to extend these brake lines anyways. It's a 9 16 Blah, 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 you should be wearing gloves, brake fluid's highly corrosive, yada, yada, yada. We'll tell you what, you and your mom can wear gloves whenever y'all work on your truck. Figured I'd get myself something nice. I've wanted these for a long time. Every time I lift a truck, I'm always scrambling, like trying to rig stuff up. So we picked up these bad boys. They go up to almost four feet tall. Now that we have them, I'm just gonna pull the bumper off. There's not a lot of clearance in between the front of the spring and the back of the bumper. So I think it'll be easier to just pull that stuff off and have it out of the way. Now we're removing the sway bar end links. The top one is an 18 millimeter. We're just gonna take off the top. We're not actually reusing this sway bar. Uh, we're getting a sway bar off of an 05 and up. So no, no real need to actually take this off. And when the bigger bar doesn't work, we put a cheater bar on the bigger bar. And when that doesn't work, we start cutting. Now remove the sway bar from the axle mounted bracket. It's an 18 millimeter. 
trying to do this one handed here. Mm. <laughs> Ow. So with this guy removed, now we can, you can see we can get back here to this nut a little bit easier. Now remove the other end of the track bar. It is also an 18 millimeter. All right, now we can cut the front axle U-bolts. I'm not gonna reuse these. It's not a good idea to reuse them anyways because uh, they stretch whenever you tighten them. So since we're taking the lift off of this truck, this two and a half inch lift, and putting it on this truck that has a two and a half inch lift, which this is why we're replacing it. It has blocks under it for some reason in the front, but we're gonna take the lift off of this guy, put it on the blue truck, this is the last time this truck's gonna have leaf springs in the front. So just go ahead and cut through all four U-bolts in the front. And one thing that I like to do whenever I'm doing this stuff is support the axle, back, or I'm, yeah, support the back of the pumpkin back here so that whenever everything isn't attached anymore, it tends to wanna go like this and sink down. And then what can happen is uh, your drive shaft can actually slip out of the yoke and then you gotta redo that. Put it back in, which isn't a big deal, it's just one more pain in the butt. Also, I noticed somebody has done some drilling before, so I'll probably end up putting some sort of a sleeve or something. Um, you know, these two look like they're still good, but these two were misdrilled. Okay, so now nothing's really holding the leaf springs onto the axle. Make sure that you have the frame supported uh, somewhere else because now once we remove these bolts, and these are 19 millimeter, once we remove those, nothing's gonna be supporting the front of the truck. So we need to make sure that we have some support on the actual frame so that the axle and leaf springs can drop down when we want them to. Obviously they're being supported right now, but here in a second, we're gonna uh, change that to where we can lower the axle. down the axle to where there's no weight on the springs since the since the frame is supported by the jack stands up in front now we can lower down the axle by itself and then make it easier to remove this uh, back bolt here and get the leaf springs out of here for the last time ever on this truck it will no longer have leaf springs up front the leaf strings out of the way now we can go ahead and take off the old cutter pin and it doesn't matter if you mess this up because you're going to use a new one anyways. Now remove the castle nut. This is a 7 8 Remove the bottom nut from the pitman arm. It's a 1 and 5 16 socket. I was planning to use a pitman arm puller, but the thickness of this part won't fit in there. And I'm not going to mess with uh, trying to wedge it back up in there so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna cut the side of this uh, i did it on the 96 and it went pretty well uh, just got to make sure that you're careful not to nick this so i'll probably put the nut back on there just while i start cutting this uh, to avoid boogering that up okay so what i started out doing was i started to cut this thing off and the size of the pad that i had for actually cutting the the cutting wheel it wasn't letting me get up in there and I didn't want to go to the store to get a different one. And so I put the Pittman puller on here and even with just this little relief cut, this thing is fixing to come off with just like three or four turns with the, uh, the cheater bar. So I think just cutting maybe a relief cut could be an easier way to do it instead of fully cutting through and potentially uh, messing up the splines on the power steering box. So it's fixing to come off. That was probably the easiest pitman, pitman arm I've ever taken off. With this bolt-on kit, you have to take off the sway bar bracket that's actually 
attached to the axle on the driver's side. And then you also have to remove the uh, bracket down beneath the axle on the passenger side. So we're gonna grind those off. You can see what that's doing right there. It's starting to break it. So I can grind a little bit and then uh, beat on it, grind, beat. Now you can go ahead and take off the uh, leaf spring mounts to include the one at the rear of the leaf spring that's riveted on. So you can just grind those off and have it look a lot cleaner. The front part is a 15 16 I apologize for any wind noise. We have like 50 mile an hour gusts of wind right now. It's like 25 degrees, but I don't know if y'all can hear that music off in the background. It's the boys soccer team for the high school. They got a game tonight and then girls after that, but they are playing their warm up music right now, but they are having a freaking jam sesh over there. It is the loudest I've ever heard it. We usually hear like when they're announcing the football games and stuff, but tonight it is like excessively loud. That's all right. I don't know how long these warm-ups are. I used to play soccer. I don't think our warm-ups are this long. It's, it's like they got a quinceanera going on over there right now. All right, so with the angle grinder, we were having trouble getting down actually in here to be able to reach all this and beating on it wasn't really working. So we hired a professional. They came over with a torch and they were actually cutting everything off for us. Um, so relatively quick solution. Um, and this is actually a fencing company that's doing it. So if you can find a fencing company, um, a plumber of some sort, those guys will typically have a cutting torch. So have them remove on the passenger side, the bottom bracket that's underneath the axle. On the driver's side, have them remove the uh, sway bar bracket that's uh, vertical, which you saw that in a previous uh, clip here. Then on both sides, you're gonna remove the mount from the frame that's riveted on there for the sway bar end links on the driver's side and the passenger side. And then last thing you're gonna take off is gonna be for the front leaf springs. Uh, removing the rear mount from the frame, which is also riveted on there, I think with six rivets, uh, four on the face of the frame and then two underneath. With the brackets cut off, I'm gonna clean this up, grind it down a little bit, just to make it look a little bit better. You don't have to do that. You'll probably need to do it in some spots just to get clearance for some of the brackets that uh, come with the MDK kit, but uh, you don't have to make it look pretty, uh, just You'll have to kind of play around with the fit and finish of the brackets that sit on here to see if it's uh, gonna fit for you. On the passenger side, this little alignment pin, you don't need that anymore, so you can take that off if you want to uh, have a cleaner look. I haven't been really showing any of this pro process, but I'm fixing to paint the axle, so I figure I'd show a little bit of that so that y'all don't think, why is this axle suddenly painted? Little side note for you, when you're trying to remove the drag link from the pitman arm, don't beat on it too hard because, like in my case, I hit it way too hard. It ended up deforming the top of that uh, bolt that actually goes up through the pitman arm. So, I probably could have cut off the top couple of threads. Uh, it actually like mushroomed it out. Probably could have cut that off, but I ended up just going to O'Reilly's. And I'll put the part number in the description for the video. But $27 later, O'Reilly's had it. So, I just figured, get this guy and good as new you can kind of see what i'm talking about there it deformed the top probably could have cut off the top a little bit there but figured for 27 bucks it was well worth getting a new one and then you get the new joint and everything if you ended up taking off the spindle connecting rod go ahead and uh, re-thread that back in and use the old one you can see where the old uh, mark used to be where it was clamped in. So just use that as a guide to how far you should screw this guy in. We're gonna put the pitman arm on first. 
And I'm actually gonna spray it with a little bit of lubricating spray just so if I ever have to take it off again in, in the future, like if I go with an even bigger lift and have to do the, uh, even more of a drop pitman arm, uh, I can do that fairly easily. You could have done this earlier whenever you remove the actual track bar bracket, but now I'm removing this. It's 13 sixteenths, there are three of them. And then these guys, you're gonna have to push them all the way forward and then cut them off. There's no way that you can slide them out without removing the oil pan. The way I'm doing it is I put some vice grips on this front part. Sorry for the shakiness, I'm trying to hold a couple things, but put vice grips on the outside and then that way you can cut off just the length of the head of the bolt and then just choppy chop. All right, with the stock track bar bracket removed from the frame, we're now installing the MDK version goes on the driver's side by where your shock mount used to be and you can see these two holes on the back there those mount to right here it's an 18 millimeter on the outside to get to the back side i'm using a stubby 15 millimeter and just coming around from the front for the front one and the back for the back one so you can see i have it on the bolts but they're not actually tightened up that gives you an idea of where you need to drill on your frame so you can just uh, mark in there with a marker or sharpie or whatever, uh, mark your holes and then drill them out. The cabin chassis frame is a little bit different. It has a slight bend right here uh, that bends downward. It doesn't, it's not flat all the way across. So with this, I'm gonna have a small space in there, which is fine. But for now, I'm just gonna use some washers until I can find a, uh, like a donut type spacer. Now attach the shock mount, the top part to the actual coil bucket on both sides, one facing to the left, one facing to the right. You're gonna be using these four bolts with the nylock nuts. The head of the bolt is 5 8 and the actual nuts are also 5 8 Using the same bolts that the old shock mount bracket was uh, set up with, we're now putting this guy in its place with the shock the top shock mount pointing towards the rear. Now we're mounting the brackets that are kind of the meat and potatoes of this whole uh, suspension setup. The two mounts are pretty much identical except the one that goes on the driver's side, you can kind of see this little notch out. That's so that it can actually sit right here and clear that. And then as far as the bottom brackets, you can see that the one that goes on the driver's side is a little bit taller. Then the one that goes on this side, let's put them side by side here. You kind of see that difference. And again, it has a little notch cut out here so that we can clear this guy. On the driver's side, this is not even bolted in or anything yet, but there is no play side to side. Uh, there's, I mean, it is built to fit exactly right here. So there shouldn't be much play in there. As far as the bolts go, we have three different lengths of bolts. The longest set is gonna go on the driver's side. When you tighten up these bolts on each side, uh, the passenger side and the driver's side, try to do it evenly. So, you know, a little bit on this one first, then a little bit on the back one, a little there, a little there so that the spacing between the top and bottom bracket are even. And at this point, you can kind of see the axle isn't fully lined up just because it's been disconnected and moved around and torqued on and everything. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna connect the drag link to the pitman arm, and then we'll get the axle kind of lined up a little bit and start maybe putting in the coil spring and all that get everything lined up and then once that's lined up then we'll go back and tighten down the uh, the brackets fully okay now we're putting on the sway bar bracket it mounts underneath this front body mount you can see it's got the big hole right here for going around this rivet you have to actually on both sides this hole and that hole both have to be drilled out just a little bit uh, to accommodate the 7 16 bolt I've been trying to install everything to where everything that's gonna be visible is gonna be, uh, look good. So like on here, you know, put
putting it to where it's just the bolt head that you see versus the actual nut on these brackets i think it's going to be better to actually go in drop the bolt in from the top and because it, otherwise feeding it up in there it's really hard to get back into that spot to get a washer and a nut on so on this i think it's all going to be hidden by the uh, bumper anyway so just install it from the bolt going down now on this passenger side this back one's kind of tough so i'm using this little gripper deal and then drop her down in there i'm having the most success with this angled three quarter inch wrench putting it back there like that and then with a deep set socket and this little guy it's a three eighths inch ratchet just slowly going back and forth it's taking a little bit of time but that was the most ergonomic way i could get to do it all right we got it mounted up i didn't tighten it down all the way i'm gonna wait until i get the actual sway bar tomorrow uh, before i lock it in place and then that way i can you know make any final adjustments that i need to but if you have the track bar i would almost install the track bar bracket um, on the bottom of the mdk mount and then install everything at the same time if you have an extra set of hands i think that would be the easiest way and then that way you can just tighten it down from the get-go i'm gonna start putting the sway bar in links on since i'm waiting for the sway bar to get here tomorrow but as you'll probably notice there are a lot of things that you can do out of order so you could do um kind of your own order of operations this is just kind of an overall gist of how to get from stock suspension to a finished product so if you want to do things a little bit differently that's fine it's not going to hurt anything go get them now we'll put on the coil spring bases it's cool because you put the slit in here so that depending on where your axle sits you can slide it one way or the other uh, and you know eventually get it to line up from let's zoom out get this to line up there and then also this way it's a 15 16 and this is actually going to be easier to do by putting the washer on and then sliding the washer and bolt into the side and then come up through the middle of the spacer it's officially pollen season in texas so everything's getting a nice coat of pollen on it but now we can attach the track bar going from the driver's side to the passenger side as far as the alignment goes i'm not sure the axle really hasn't moved all that much side to side but i'm not exactly sure how much i'm going to need to adjust it so i'm going to get the track bar on and just wherever it's on it's on uh, settings wise and then i'll get the coils installed and then kind of start adjusting side to side to see uh you know if the springs are going straight up and down on both sides or if i need to shift everything over this way or that way whatever it may be the nut and the bolt are both inch and an eighth so now we get to start putting on some more of the pretty stuff the two longer bars are going to go on the bottom the shorter ones are going to go on the top the bushings are going to go towards the front make sure when you take it to the powder coater that you either remind them to remove this or you do it yourself because my guy i had to wait probably a month to get replacement bushings because they cooked them in the oven so bushing is going to go towards the front heim is going to go to the back and what we're going to do is we're going to work our way from here install the bars and then just slowly work our way back to where we're going to actually mount the bracket the most important part is going to be that this frame mounted bracket that we have this the same distance back on the frame as we have over on the other side so that our axle is uh, even side to side and it's not off On this part, I'm doing the grease zerks towards the top uh, rather than the bottom. I don't think there's really a right way or a wrong way, but towards the top for me. All right, now that you've got the passenger and driver's side kind of mocked up, what you want to do is start on the driver's side. This might be kind of hard with one hand, 
but you see these four holes they kind of are directly beneath that uh, little vent window these four holes right here so you want to try to line up the bottom right hand uh, bracket hole you want to line up either the very last one or this one in my case I haven't even adjusted anything yet and it fits it's like almost perfect with the third one so I'm going with the third and then one thing you want to double check is just make sure that your axle is still centered front to back on the on the fender so we're we should be in pretty good shape I haven't really moved the axle at all neither side to side nor front to back I took the tires off and pretty much plopped straight down so axle wise we're in pretty good shape these four holes they're roughly half inch or so and so we have a 9 16 bolt that we got to put through there just get a drill bit it doesn't have to be it can be smaller than a half inch and just kind of waller out uh, whichever hole you're going to use attach the bracket with just this one bolt and then you're gonna be able to mark your other holes and then you can pull the bracket down out of the way drill those four holes or the three other holes and then mount everything So we've got this one bolt tightened down pretty good. So what we're going to do now is uh, start the holes for the other three. And then we'll actually re remove the bracket to finish drilling out. Because uh, this is only a half inch bit, but it needs to be 9 16. So we're going to be actually just wallering out, kind of doing some funky angles. And I don't want to mess up the powder coat on this bracket. So now we've got it pretty well installed there on this side on the driver's side so what we're doing now is taking a measurement from the very front of the bumper back to where these holes are um, you can take that measurement and then transfer it over to the passenger side and that should help you with getting everything lined up the exact same on both sides now we're at the point where we can start putting our springs in my goal is to have the dually sit and about like this truck, a little bit taller than that truck. So what I ended up buying was, I got That's not good. Don't do that. Yeah. All right, so the original plan was to do that one inch isolator spacer on top of the coil to get us a little bit extra uh, clearance. I don't think we're gonna need to do that on my flag truck, beard truck, grandpa truck, whatever you wanna call it on the 96. That we've got probably 29 uh, inches from the center of the hub to the top of the wheel well. Roughing, roughly putting it in on the passenger side on the dually, we've got like 30 inches already. So I took off the uh, isolator and I had to order a stock isolator, which those things were actually kind of expensive. Uh, it came out to like 90 bucks shipped or 60 bucks shipped. So wait a few days. In the meantime, I've just got it uh, kind of sitting there. It's got the, um, it has the coil in place, but not the isolator. So just for the sake of being able to keep moving along, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the driver's side. And then whenever the isolators come in in a few days, I'll just drop the axle real quick, throw on the isolators, and then keep going. In the meantime, I can also measure for my shocks. Uh, from eye to eye so we'll get those measured and ordered keep on going all 
All right, so you can see it is now officially under its own weight with the springs installed. You can see there's nothing. So it is completely on springs now. I think I'm going to throw the tires on, even though, you know, no front sway bar, no shock, who cares? Um, just to roll it forward because measuring here to there, I got 33 inches on this side. On this side, I've got 29 and three quarters. So I think that the way that the rear tires are set up is that this side is sitting higher and it's pushing up the entire body on this side. So uh, we're gonna roll it forward onto some flat ground and see what measurements we get. We got our smooth body Fox 2.0 reservoir shocks clamp. We're gonna have to get a different sleeve for each end of these shocks because the width on that is about an inch and set, what was it inch and something but the opening on the top and the bottom the mounts are only an uh, inch and three eighths wide so we're gonna have to either grind down what we have or just go get a new sleeve which i think is going to be the easier option coil isolator is installed cobwebs are installed I'm going to take off the brake line. Really, I guess you could do this at the very beginning because uh, if you're lifting it, if you're not lifting it, there's no point. But uh, in my case, the brake lines are getting here tomorrow, the extended ones. Uh, I got them for a six inch lift. So I'm going to take that off so I can still put the shock on and get that all mounted up. So it's ready to just install the new brake lines whenever those get here tomorrow. Pay attention when you start putting this stuff back on. You got the stock line here, then you've got the passenger side in the front, driver's side in the front, and then the rear extension. So you'll figure it out pretty quick if uh, you put it in wrong. Cause like if you put this guy in on the uh, driver's side, you're not gonna have the little side port that you need. So just save yourself a few minutes and take a look before you start wrenching. So like we talked about before, one thing that's not included in the kit is the front sway bar uh, brackets and or sway bar either. But so I'm waiting on those parts to come in. What I'm going to do in the meantime, the front is pretty much buttoned up. I'm going to so what we're going to do now is I'm going to extend the brake line on the rear. I'm going to do that right now uh, before I actually put the lift on so that I can go ahead and bleed the brakes now instead of bleeding the fronts now uh, or instead of bleeding them now and then replacing the line later blah 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 so just do it once so we're gonna uh, bleed the brakes now and then drive around the neighborhood make sure that it's all uh, driving okay then we'll get to going on the back what we did for the back is i've got an eight inch block from pmf we went with the three quarter diameter u-bolts all right the brakes are all bled and we are ready to put the tires on and fire this thing up Back under its own power now. Time to get started on the back. So today we're putting on the eight inch block from PMF. We've already done the front suspension from MDK. Did the coil conversion, it used to be leaf spring, now it's coil with a four link. Got the Fox shocks, Icon springs. Now we're doing the PMF rear block. We're taking out the stock four inch block from the cabin chassis, putting in this eight inch tall block. Hopefully that gets it pretty close to level. If it doesn't level it up, we're gonna keep that block and then we'll just get some uh, lift springs for the back, just a couple inches if needed. PMF blocks, top quality stuff, but you can see the difference in the pegs of how much I had to grind it down to get it to sit in there. Um, so just something they could possibly improve on. For the sway bar brackets, I ended up buying the stock brackets from an 05 to 06 directly from Ford. I was having trouble finding them uh, used. I bought the the bracket as well as the bushing and then i actually found this at an off-road shop uh, that installs lifts 
I went there and just asked them if they happened to have a sway bar and they actually had one they said it had been laying around for a couple years so they sold me that for like 20 bucks or something I don't know if the video is picking this up but this hole is actually smaller than this one so like I wanted to do a half inch bolt um, I really could only get like a 3 8 in there into the bigger one and so what I'm doing is I ended up buying just half inch bolts and I'm gonna drill these two out so that they can take this guy but I'm not sure what the why they're different sizes uh, but it's like that on both brackets so I finally got these brackets in and the bushings 05 to 07 uh, sway bar got everything loosely hooked up it's easier to mount this part first and don't do the end links get this stuff all mounted up and then you can adjust these heim joints to whatever height you need to get it to match up front lift has been done we got the rear lift put on and we're fixing to put it down on the ground all four corners on its own for the first time since all the lift stuff's been done dirty so I gotta tighten down the u-bolts I didn't want to stretch them until I found out that the stance was gonna be okay and I'd say it looks pretty okay just gotta get her cleaned up a little bit she's ready 1995 Ford f-350 with the 7.3 power stroke just finished putting on the lift and everything. The pedal goes all the way to the floor. It already had a little problem before we uh, put the lift on, but now it's even worse. So pedal goes all the way to the floor. It almost won't stop. You have to like switch it out of gear um, and there's no, there's really no resistance at all. So today we're gonna be replacing the brake booster as well as the master cylinder. I don't know which one is failing. It might even not be either one of those. It might be the vacuum pump. I don't know, but I figure the truck is almost 30 something years old. And so we're gonna be just replacing those just for good maintenance, replacing all the fluid. Let's go. So I actually finished this uh, kit, installing it and getting everything drivable probably six months ago. Uh, I've been growing out my hair a little bit. I got the AirPod Pros now. No longer just the regular ones, we're stepping up. All that to be said, this is a very, very nicely engineered and produced kit. Uh, the welds are great, the fit and finish are just, they're top notch. Um, I would have posted this sooner, but I had been waiting for a buddy that was gonna do some drone footage and make a whole dramatic video of the truck driving and whatnot, but we couldn't get our schedules to align. Finally tonight, I'm like, let's just go ahead and get this uh, hammered out and done. All that to be said, it's a very, very good kit. I would install it again on another vehicle. I'm sure that now that we have the instructions and everything, the written instructions plus this install video, that it's gonna make it way easier for everybody to actually get this thing installed. I think MDK is now even doing stuff for uh, Dodge slash Cummins guys. Uh, so for those of y'all that are guys that also like guys, y'all are gonna have some kits available for y'all now. <laughs> 